Hey fam, welcome back to the channel. Today, I would like to wrap up this autistic readathon with you. Um, my brain imploded midway through. How do you feel about readathons? Do you experience that too? Do you start off good in the first half and then pfft, relatable? <laughs> Okie dokie. So yeah, I was, I, oh, oh, it was, it was a solid start though. It was a solid start. I was feeling pretty darn spiffy. Freaking Goodreads was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. And then I lost all focus, not just like with reading, but for like everything executive function. Who the fuck is that? Like, <sighs> but I did it. I'm like, over a week late <laughs> but I did it I stayed the course I was insistent <laughs> so here we go number one was a new to you author which was like a debut or just new to you and I went with get a life Chloe Brown <sighs> my niece's name is Aaliyah it was originally Alia but then baby daddy was like no because then you'll be like calling her in and you'll be like Alia come on in for dinner and like all of the kids were coming <laughs> so he won so this is like a t in front and i'm so like i don't want to mispronounce it talia hibbert i am really excited to continue on these series this series and get to know the sisters um more uh and <laughs> there's a mid-year freak out book tag that asked like your new fictional crush and i was like i don't think of crushes the way other people seem to think of crushes, but I'll go with this. And Red is the one that I thought of. Um, like, Chloe's relatable. Everyone's just relatable. <sighs> it's a positive read. I kept, <laughs> I mainly read horror, right? And horror, thrillers, sci-fi, whatever. And so I'm used to like shit happening, unless it's a gothic then apparently I'm all about the slow burn. But otherwise, no thanks, I need shit to be happening. And whenever I read like general fiction or romance or something where shit's just not supposed to happen, <laughs> it's like I have to keep reminding myself like someone's not gonna bust through the wall and just slaughter everyone. <laughs> Take it down a notch, Amy, my goodness. <laughs> so, but this was like my nighttime chill book after a day of reading horror. And it works like a charm. It's so nice and chill and positive vibes. And like everyone's going through their shit, but like there's that growth. There's that want to evolve and I like it. I like this book. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. Mm -hmm. All right, and then, whoops, I covered it. And number two is read a book with a cover that makes you happy. So I went with No Man of Woman Born. And I feel like I gotta kind of put this and number four together though, because number four is Transcending Flesh, same author. And oh, it was great because like, even if, okay, listen, Transcending Flesh, I'm getting excited and I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Transcending Flesh, I think that anyone who is a writer or a word builder should read this. Seriously, it's a collection of essays. It's really good. And if, even if you're someone where like, um, it's common sense, <laughs> you know what I mean? These points being made, um, it's still very inspirational. I kept like, I've never written a sci-fi story, but the ideas that I was coming, oh, oh my goodness. And also, um, to be able to, like, I think I was one, maybe two stories deep in this one. And it was really great to be able to go from transcending flesh over to this and getting to see these examples in use. You know what I mean? And plus this is a collection of like fairy tales told with actual representation and stuff and not just the usual vanilla. And I loved it. There's a Sleeping Beauty story. How could you not? It was like, it just kept getting better, fam. It just kept getting better. I was like, oh my goodness. Seriously, with there's like one element and you're good. And then it just kept going. And it was like, oh my goodness. This is like the best Sleeping Beauty retelling ever. And everyone needs to know it, okay? <laughs> so that was really awesome. Being able to go from these essays and 
and how to be able to respect communities. Like, regardless of what your world is that you're building, whether you're a writer or a dungeon master, um, trans folk are abound. Do you know what I mean? You know, like, if gender is a social construct, how is everyone supposed to fit that box? You know what I mean? So... It just broadens everything and makes things that should be so simple and obvious. Like, there's something that is mentioned about being non-binary in it that I feel like I've only known about this term for the past couple of years. I've, I like saw it and was like, what is that? I like that. That's a good way to put What does it mean? And then I found out what it meant and I was like, oh, that's me. <laughs> but there was always something that wasn't quite clicking, you know? And I was like, I cannot put my tongue on it, but it is there and it's bugging me. And why? It's like my brain just hadn't quite, and I can't say that anymore. So thank you. Then <laughs> we move on to, whoop, whoop, whoop. <clears throat> I have a wig strand. Just, I can't get rid of it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm having a moment, forgive me. <laughs> so number three is read a book with a cover that has your favorite color. Now, since I was already in the middle of Get a Life Chloe Brown, I compromised and I went with, it's a short called The Queen of Cups. I really liked this story. I really, I really liked this. I, I can't, it's so short and I don't want to spoil anything. There's a synopsis, just roll with it. <laughs> I really like this. I'm pretty sure I read it in like one sitting. I just, you remember how happy I was after reading Winnie by Katie Michelle Quinn? It was like that. I kind of have them on par together for like the good vibes that I walked away from. I really liked it. Okay. And then the compromise, the extra one was, uh, since that one was so short and I was in the middle, it works out. It's fair. I was also reading Pretending to be Normal. This, this is a nonfiction. Um, so I feel like in the past year since learning that I'm autistic, when I read things like this, it's like receiving validation for the first time in my life. <laughs> I never really put much stock in validation because it's like, well, who are you hurting? If there's something you want to do, like, why are you holding yourself back, right? Um, and not like, but I feel really validated when I read this shit. <laughs> so maybe I'm biased. It was, it was good. And plus Leanne comes from a bit of a performance background like I do. And I honestly feel like that was my saving grace growing up. Like performers kind of have their own quirks, don't they? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're a bit more accepting. Plus, if anything, we're all kind of in an environment and we're just like, Ooh, I got to remember that. Otherwise, and then number five, read a book that has something you are interested in on the cover. This fucking book. Okay, listen. I pre-ordered the Pride Deadpool, like, what, May or whenever the heck it was that the Pride stuff showed up on the front page of Amazon, Disney, Puma, all these different companies and shit. And I pre-ordered the Deadpool, the Pride Deadpool. And I waited for ordering this final book for the final week, right? Because it was, it was my only horror selection and I knew I was just going to be like, mm. <laughs> I should have just done it, huh? It would have been fine. Anyway, moving on. What was then is not now. <laughs> hmm. What if I need more coffee, huh? I don't think there were mistakes. I don't think it was oversold because I was getting those shipping updates and it was like oh so deadpool is finally shipping and it'll, it's going to come with the bloody mary saga and i was really freaking happy and then it just didn't happen i didn't get shit somebody took my deadpool it was like yes it's coming okay it'll be here by 9 p.m and they couldn't replace that but i finally finally got my hands 
on Bloody Mary Saga. And this is what a... Mm, mm, mm. Let me tell Let me tell you. I didn't want to wait anymore to do this video. So I'm on like chapter six, which is like, I'm on page, what, 49? Yes. So much happens. You are like poof, already running by the time, like page one, dude. Like, if the most recent uh, video in the REM series, Read Horror With Me, um, <laughs> forgetting, that's the one video I've put up so far for that series that were there are reactions from me throughout the whole book because I was just like, damn, woo, all right. And then there are like parts where like the way these characters interact, I'm really enjoying Hillary's writing. Wait, I'm not the only autistic horror writer. I know that there are others out there and I want to read your shit. So this one is gonna get its own video. It's gonna get its own video and it's gonna be a great time. And then I can do both of them. It's kind of, I like a good compromise. What can I say? <laughs> so there you go, babble and all. <laughs> Thank you to Christine over at An Autistic Reader for creating this book tag. It's probably the only one I'm ever going to do. <laughs> Not because of anything other than, okay, so that's how my, I'm, I guess I'm just a moody reader. I'm just a moody reader. And anytime I try to like, I just pick myself up. It's just bad, it's just bad. The ghosty shows have been helping though. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I am the, oh no. And now I found like the celebrity ghost stories. Some people have some really interesting stories. My goodness. <laughs> Alrighty fam, until next time and beyond. You take care and I will try as well. I will not be defeated by executive functioning this week. I will defeat the executive functioning 50-50.